What's up, ecosystem? What is a broker? And what's a dispatcher? And who cares? Actually, James Lamb cares. Actually, a lot of people care. And more and more people are positive that dispatchers are illegal. Now, I'm not positive, but I want to hear more about it. And if you're a dispatcher, this might hurt more than you think. Broker versus dispatcher. It's an interview with James Lamb at SBTC. And you're going to want to buckle in. This is Tuesday Nights Live on Auto Transport Intel. I'm Jay, your host. Welcome back to the show. guys welcome back to tuesday nights live on auto transport intel i appreciate you guys tuning in it's a tuesday night everybody's at home anyway so why not right go ahead and tune in for episode 135 broker versus dispatcher now we've talked about this topic before um and we're going to take another big bite at the apple we have a long interview with James Lamb of SBTC. Hey, but I'm jumping ahead of myself. If you've never been here before, number one, I want you to feel welcome. We just started the show, so please do feel welcome. In fact, please join the live chat. Jump in there, say hello, let us know what's going on, what's happening with you, are you safe, are you working, what are you doing, what is happening? Uh, in fact, we're going to go into industry news, which is national news, social media news, real news, fake news, photos, whatever you got. Autotransportintel at gmail.com. Send it to me, and it might end up in the news on Autotransport Intel. Tonight, we have the interview with James Lamb, broker versus dispatcher, MAP21 freight brokering laws. How much do you know about it? And what you think you know, is it right? Is it true? So we're going to talk about it. I really want you to chime in. This is actually, this is going to be very informative. And so what we're going to do is in the panel later on, we're going to bring in Sue and Murphy Auto. You know that she's an advertiser on the show. She's a friend of the show. She's also my co-host on Dispatching Live on Thursdays every other week at noon Central Time. So this is going to be, this is a big show. So what we got to do is before we can go in and say hello to the live chat, uh, what I want you to do is stick around for a second Hear a word about Murphy Auto Transport Dispatch Services? Are you completely stressed out from all the calls and the contracts and the verification of loads when nobody answers the phone? Call Murphy Auto Dispatch Services today. Murphy Auto Dispatch Services has over 15 years of experience in the transport industry. We are your office while you are on the road. We book, we verify, and we bill out your loads for you. We have an excellent accounting staff and an even better dispatch team. Give us a call today at 417-273-0021. Or if you want to email me, it's murphyautotransport31 at yahoo.com. Give us a call today. Like I said, Sue is a friend of this show. There's her phone number, there's her email, there's her website, and Sue has a broker's license. So the good news is, no matter what we say tonight, you can't hurt Sue because she does dispatching, she does brokering. Wait a minute, I thought they were the same thing. Although not the same thing? Huh, we're going to talk about it tonight. So please do say hello in the live chat. Let's go into the live chat 
And hey, Heavy Holler 1 USA, you were here first, so thank you for tuning in tonight and saying hello. Uh, he says, hey, Jay, thank you for the invite to, to, to join tonight's discussion. This is Scott. Awesome. Scott sent me an email. He had a question. So if you have a question for me, send me an email, autotransportintel at gmail.com. I'll help you in any way I can, maybe connect you with Ty, tell you to tune into the show. We want you to be a part of the community. Ty, is this where you find brokers and dispatchers in love? Yes, Ty. That is exactly right. That, in fact, that's exactly what you'll find tonight is Broker Dispatcher Love. Man, we should have called the show that tonight. How did I miss that one? Hey, Kimberly is with us. What's going on, Kimberly? Thank you for joining me in the live chat. I sure do appreciate it. Listen, if you've got, if you missed something and you need a question answered, Kimberly is in the live chat. She wants to help. We got Ty standing by. Rob Stevenson, greetings from Springfield, Ohio. What's up, Rob, in Springfield, Ohio? Thanks for tuning in, letting us know where you are. Hey, Ken Eaton is with us from Medford, Massachusetts. What is up, Ken? How are you doing, buddy? Man, great to hear from you, dude. Thanks for tuning in to my show. Uh, anybody who's known me a long time knows that. Man, I've, I've made a million shows. Did you know this is... This is show episode 135 of Auto Transport Intel. Now, Streaming Media Dojo back in the day, I still have more episodes of that under my belt. I did that for many years, but I'm close with Auto Transport Intel. We're going to eclipse Streaming Media Dojo. Heavy Holler 1, greetings. Scott is here. Yes. Thank you for saying hello, Scott. Carlos Braxton, ACB Logistics is with us. What's up, Carlos? Heather Wall, hey Jay, it's JR hiding behind my girlfriend's account. <laughs> awesome, so Ken and JR are here? Wow, that's cool, man. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Appreciate that. Mark, hey Jay, Mark from Superflow Systems is here. Mark is a friend of the show. And uh, listen, Mark, always great information. Information, And listen, if you have any good questions, that goes with, for anybody. If you have a good broker, dispatcher, freight question, I want to hear it because, man... I'm telling you, this is going to be a crazy show. This is going to be crazy. ASIC being them enough. Hey, what's up, man? Thanks for tuning in. I'm close. I'm close on that. Uh, what else we got? Bill Bad Apples, what's up? Car people, happy Tuesday. Hey, I'm not too loud. Am I check, 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 check it. Okay, I think I'm okay. And you can see me and hear me okay? Okay. Uh, Joseph McCleary, what's up? Joe is here attending part of the core, alive and well. Thank you so much, Joe. Glad to hear you're safe. Uh, now are you still in business, right? No, listen, I know it's hard. Um, actually, we're going to have, that's an in industry news too, so we'll save it. We'll save it. Ronick Traffic Inc. is here. Tuned in for some love. Great. That's why everybody tunes in. Just checking up on you, says Ken. <laughs> yeah, man. Thanks. We got to, dude, we got to check in on each other now at times, like more than ever. So thanks, buddy. Jeff Seltzer, good evening, everyone from South Jersey. Thanks for saying hello, Jeff appreciate it and we're live you know why we're live because we're alive so we're here we're live together we're alive we're on the internet i mean what else are we gonna do <laughs> um and i'm scrolling down oh wait it jumps ahead i don't know why it's not a smoother scroll dear youtube i need a smoother scroll you ever need a smoother scroll out here saving the world from the corona one car at a time nice Exotic Hotshot says hello. What's up, Exotic Hotshot? How you doing? Um, Ivan Rogoivoy. I'm close. I know I'm close. What's up, Ivan? Uh, how you doing, man? Thanks for tuning in. Where are you? What's going on with you? Right? Are you dispatching? Are you brokering? Are you flipping through law books? DH Beard says hello. Hey, what's up, DH Beard? Yeah, man. That's cool. Don't think I've seen you in here before. Happy to have you. Longtime listener, first time caller. Charles Method is with us. What's up, Charles? Lander Logistics Services. What's up, Lander Logistics Services? Thanks for tuning in. Oh, I got a, uh, what is that? You know, you hear those notifications? You know, after a while, you don't even know which sound is what. You just know something's coming in over the wire. The fax machine. It was the fax machine. I'm sure that's what it was. Um, good evening from Urbana, Ohio, says Charles Method. Flavian Yusa. No, I know. It's Fla Flavian E USA. I need a load urgently. Well, you should. Dude, let Sue know what you're looking for. She searches load boards constantly. She's got her finger on the pulse. 
Uh, what else? Heavy Holler, Mark, Sue. It's just going back and forth. There we go. We are. We're seeing some love here. Slip plate. Jay didn't get it. Oh man, come on. Don't say that. Don't don't call me out live. I was only a dispatcher. Wait a minute. Wait, I was a dispatcher? Wait, is that legal? Can you do that? Can I don't know if you can still do that. You know, don't you wonder, like if you're a dispatcher right now and you're advertising, I'm, we've seen it. We're going to see some of that, I think, tonight. If you've been advertising on Facebook and social media, Facebook is social media, that you're a dispatcher, and then like somebody says, hey, you're running illegal, and you're like, what are you, what are you talking about? I'm just dispatching. And they're like, no, no, you're definitely illegal. And this is where I come in. You know what? Um, I think the law says it's illegal, but I... Here's actually a good question. Here's what I think James would say. Where did the dispatching definition come from? Was this, was this a legitimate job to begin with? Just because a lot of people are doing it doesn't make it a legitimate job. But then again, I mean, people do jobs all the time, and just because there's no legal definition does it make the job illegitimate? <laughs> I don't know, man. It actually, it's kind of a catch-22. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to come back right after the break. We're going to go in. Yes, and thank you, Assertus. Assertus is now a friend of the show. And um, if you want to contact Assertus, there's actually a lot more to learn about than you may realize. Vehicle storage, carrier services, compliance. Um, they do all kinds of things over at Assertus. You can go to AssertusDelivers.com. Check it out. Find out more. Velocity. And actually, coming up in May, we've got another Assertus show coming up in May. And we're going to learn a lot more about... Should I say it? I don't know. Maybe I'll keep you in suspense. Actually, you're going to want to see the show. There's there's a lot more to Assertus than you realize. I know. It was it was Metro Loads, right? Metrogistic Metro Loads. Then we heard that they you know acquired Amerifleet. Um, back in the day, they acquired McNutt. Uh, anyways, big company. They do a lot. And if you are outside of just being in the carrier and broker arena, if, arena, if you're a dealer or a management fleet services company, you definitely want to talk to Assertus, especially when it comes to psst, home delivery. You heard it here, home delivery. So you're definitely going to want to check that out. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to go... Oh, it says state of car hauling. You mean nobody changed that? Oh, that CG guy is fired. Hey, pack up your stuff and get out of here. Yep, you're out of here. You messed up the state of car hauling. Okay, that's just not true. It's not even funny. What are you, some kind of dispatcher? Okay, so this is episode 135 Broker versus Dispatcher with James Lamb of SPTC. Now, you know me. I kind of like to kid around because, you know, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a bit of a kidder. But this is no laughing matter. Tonight is actually a pretty serious show. We're going to have a little... <laughs> Auto converse. Fired. We are going to have a little bit of fun with it just because, you know, when things are so serious, you know, like heated moments, it's good to have a, you know, that awkward laugh. We might have some awkward laughs tonight, but actually... Tonight's subject matter is very serious, and uh, I hope that, actually, I hope you learn a lot. And if you have a question, man, bring it. You're going to want to stick around for that. That's coming up in about 30 minutes. Uh, oh, that's a letter. Whoa, 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 Jay. Don't be sharing Don't be sharing secrets ahead of time. There we go. There's our first slide. And, oh, don't forget, I want you to start a watch party. In fact, while you're, while you're starting a watch party, huh? Um, see what I did there? Uh, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check in with the Facebook pages and see if we got any traffic. So I'm, in, I'm watching, I'm checking to make sure you're starting your watch. You promised, you promised you'd start, you promised you'd start a watch party. Okay, so I got to, okay, okay, well, I don't see any watch party there on the CTS page. Okay, I'm going to check the Autotrans Intel page. Uh, oh, ho, ho. well, hey, what's going on, Bill? Bill is uh, CEO, I think I'm right on that, at uh, Assertus, tuning in to the Autotrans Intel Facebook page. Thank you so much, Bill. You know, um, there is, there's going to be a great Assertus show coming up in May, 
and um, it's great to have you guys with me. Also, do be sure, tune in and participate in the live chat. Great place to share information, answer questions, ask questions, and uh, learn more about how to be a dispatcher. Okay, hey, I've been home for a month. Well, this is just the beginning, especially if you're a dispatcher. Okay. Uh, Illinois Governor Pritzker, he extends the, can you read that? He extends the stay-at-home order through the end of May. Oh, great. Wow, it's not even May yet. How wonderful. Yep, until May 30. However, uh, oh, the new requirement that residents cover their faces in public spaces, that mandate begins on May 1st, applies to anyone over the age of two. Hey, three-year-old, you need to get a mask on that. Honker. <laughs> Lifted some restrictions on the order opening state parks. Well, thank goodness. And non-essential retail. Everybody wants to know when they get back to the hair salon. This is a list of the state's reopenings. Um, as you'll see, the most states are in the April 30th. That is in two days. So, for many people, this is their last week of self-quarantine. Others, you've got what? Oh, wow. Alaska has no end date. California has no end date. Wow. Okay. Uh, okay, I shared this. Thank you, Ty. Ty shared this with me. Now, the food supply chain is breaking, says Tyson Foods. Well, here's here, here, here's what you do. Go ahead and fuzz out those. The blank auto supply chain is breaking, says auto chairman, about auto plants continuing to close. You see what we're doing here? We're looking at all supply chains. I know. Doom and gloom, Jay. You and Governor Whitmer with your doom and gloom. You extend the stay-at-home order till May 15th, but loosen other restrictions. That's right. The governor cracked. Hashtag the governor cracked. Um, auto industry's restart is in limbo, though. Yeah, you think? Wow, do you think it's been damaged enough? I don't know. What else could we do? Uh, how about let's ma let's force them to make ventilators? Let's not get political, Jay. It's already hard enough. In fact, this is an interesting headline. Hyundai shipped to the U.S. sitting at ports over lack of demand. You've heard this lately. There's stuff everywhere. Stuff, I mean, the supply. There's stuff sitting everywhere. Everywhere you go, there's stuff sitting. It's weird. You go to the grocery store, the shelves are empty. Everywhere else, stuff is sitting there. In general. And you know what? Let's add, if, if, if we haven't had it rough enough, let's have the UAW oppose early May production restart why really okay um i saw this on facebook wentzville's gm plant preparing to open I'm like yeah i'm ready to not sit at home anymore well uh let's see here on auto news and i checked this guess what they don't have a date for restart so we just read that on facebook get ready for the disappointment pass around the disappointment popcorn because, no, I think you might be sitting at home for a little bit longer. I, it doesn't give me any joy to, to report that most of the plants don't even have a date for restart. This is as of today. Well, great. So there you go. Challenges in store for UK supply chain. It's a global thing. Warehouse is totally full. Awesome. Just great. Uh, this is a Thai shot. This, this is at Odessa. Oh, can you see that? A sea of... An ocean of cars. Sea of cars. Man. Cars as far as the eye can see. Oh, here we go. Here's another one. Saw this on Facebook. Cars as far... They're still on the trucks. Are those the trucks? I don't know if those trucks are stopped. I don't know. It ain't good. Because that's a field, dude. By the way, you're not supposed to park cars in the fields. Uh, that's how they think the 2500 in Florida got burned. Hey, this is how you get your car shipping news. Tell your friends. Start a watch party. Hashtag no excuses. Okay. Uh, hey, this is what has come to at Mannheim, Dallas. No mask, no entry. Really? Really? Wow. Okay. Mannheim, Dallas. Uh oh here here we go here we now what we're gonna do is we're gonna little we're gonna play a little fun we're gonna juxtapose something new with something terrible all right so we just had something new 
time for something terrible, 33 cents a mile. I know, it's a three-pack, but still. Is it worth it? Are you going to do that? Is it still posted? Somebody, or I'm sure somebody, somebody called in and said, I'll do it for less. Happens every day. All right, let's do something new. Lord, get that stupid idea out of my head. Okay. Actually, I don't know how new this idea is. All right, let's do something terrible. 17 cents a mile. Definitely not new. Terrible. Not new. Uh, okay, let's do something new. Hey, find a better way to get a customer. I'm on a couple of Facebook groups and all are complaining about brokers keeping too much of the money. Central is posting loads below 15 cents per mile. Not even a nine car guy can live on that. Guys, find a better way to get a customer. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go to something terrible. What is it? John Deere for 22 cents a mile? Wow, sign me up. Oh, here we go. Small lawnmower. Runs great. You know, money tied to the... All right, let's do something new. I've been parked for a month now, and... I've been parked for a month and a half. F the cheap stuff. Beginning my fourth week, I'm not running for free. You see, this is a national thing. All right, let's go to something terrible. Actually, that's kind of terrible, but... Uh, oh, yes, I saw this on Facebook. Construction worker for 11 years. My work has hit rock bottom. I'm wanting to start hot shotting. Any advice? Guy says, don't do it. Hot shot is also rock bottom. I liked this one. A truck that can do, you know, giving generalized information. Trying to be helpful. Although the truth is, don't do it. <laughs> Trucking in general is horrible. Hopefully you can read that on your mobile phone. You're like, make it bigger. Okay. Is this new or terrible? This is why there should be a minimum on Central. A smart smart for two. 23 cents a mile. Sweet old lady. I, I Now, I threw in the sweet old lady. Because the truth is, many, many years ago when I was an illegal dispatcher, although I think it was legal at the time. Was it legal or illegal? I don't even know. But anyways, there was a load, and in the in the notes, somebody they wrote, sweet old lady. Oh, yeah, yeah, that'll push me over the edge at 15 cents a mile. Sure, no problem. Uh, Sandro... Relationship is a must to survive in this business in the long run. So there seems to be definitely two camps. You've got the camps that just are really upset about rates, and it's been that way since I don't even know when. And then there's the other camp that's talking about building relationships. Now the two camps need to come together and form one big angry camp. I'm thinking. I don't know. It's just an idea. Let's do something terrible. Uh, oh, 26 cents a mile for four... Yeah, that's great. Four fifteen hundreds. Oh, and the price is firm. Hey, listen. We're firm about this. No, we're serious. Okay? Don't want to hear any hat. I don't want to hear 27 cents a mile. I don't want to hear 28 cents a mile. We are serious. I tell you, this is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> oh, man. You like it? You enjoying yourself, Jay? No, not all the time. Hey, can any of you give me a rating on Central? You see this. This isn't a Bernie Sanders campaign, this guy says. You know, um, it's hard not to want to actually help because the rates are just so bad. Oh, here we go. I wonder how many rates they require for you to book eight cents a mile. Massachusetts to Virginia. 50 bucks. Really? That's, is it a typo? Probably not. Probably not. I'm speculating live. The problem with brokers now is they're competing each other, competing with each other to quote the customer the cheapest price. True statement. Um, but of course, if you choose the cheapest broker, you get what you pay for. I used to be a driver before I became a broker. So my broker fees are very low in order to get a good driver at a decent rate. And you see that. What's interesting is, guess what? That's very important. I used to be a driver before I became a broker. Now, you can still be a driver and become a broker. Maybe that's something to think about. Just, I'm just throwing it out there. I know. Never again will I suggest any broker to a friend. You see this kind of thing. It's tough, man. It's tough. What do you do? What are you going to do? Hey, by the way, here's what we're going to do. 
We are going to take, this is our industry news halftime break. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to stick around, get your favorite ELD going. This is ELD Punch, by the way. I renamed it ELD Punch. Get your ELD Punch. I'm going to be right back. Superflow Systems is excited to introduce DispatchCenter.com, a full-service load board for brokers, shippers, carriers, and drivers, featuring integrations with Truckify mobile app and iTruckPay. Use Route Scout technology to build your routes. Maximize truck capacity. Stay loaded at the highest available revenue with the least amount of driving miles. Tell us your lanes. Loadification will alert you to new loads posting in your route. Views instant load notifications sent with BookNow features. Search and book loads directly through the Truckify mobile app. Brokers and shippers, post your loads to Dispatch Center. Give authorized carriers the opportunity to instantly book your loads. Dispatch Center powers the Truckify mobile app, allowing instant load assignment to the driver. Truckify will send inspection reports, geolocated pickup and delivery photos, BOLs, and invoices back to the broker. Brokers, shippers, carriers, and drivers, Dispatch Center, and Truckify have what you need to be more profitable every day. Hey, thank you very much for coming back to Auto Transport Intel. Yes, that is Superflow Systems. Mark is a friend of the show, also an advertiser. His phone number, email address, and website is in the live chat. Uh, Superflow Systems, Dispatch Center, Truckify, uh, Transport Auto Quoter. Oh, did you see the show with Alexa Open Quotify? Quotify for carriers? Man, check that out. Gotta do that. All right. Let's get back to it. All right, I put down my ELD punch. Man, I'll tell you what, I really needed that anyways. So perfect timing. Hey, do you need an automotive webinar recap? Send me an email, autotransportintel at gmail.com. I'm not promising anything, but I do want to know if you've got an automotive webinar recap that you need because you just don't have the time or whatever it is. Oh, speaking of, this is how I start my Wednesdays. This is tomorrow. Automotive Supply Chain April Update. This is their fourth live stream already. Automotive Logistics Ultima Media. Go to automotivelogistics.media, I think it is. Uh, or if you've got a question, hey, man, maybe I got it wrong. You want to email webinars at ultimamedia.com. Your bank account is just a phone call away. Hey, you guys making those phone calls for your PPP and your, what is it, EIDL? SBA, small business loan. Do those things. Do it. We want to see you stay in business. You need to. We need you here. There's your SBA loan stuff. COVID-19, SBA loan. I think you go to SBA. Shoot, man. I, I don't even have the website. Anybody got... If you have the website, share it in the live chat. Please do. We want people to stay in business. Hey, are you drinking more while in lockdown? <laughs> see... All right, I'm not going to explain it. I'm not explaining the joke. Uh, but it's true, Pennsylvania liquor stores sell 2.3 million worth of alcohol on first days of curbside pickup. Nice. Uh, why? Why would that be? Well, rough scenario for financial arms such as Ford Credit and uh, GMF. Down, dude. Why? Why? Oh, are used car values plummeting? Why would that be? Because, oh, we are right. We're closed, right? When are we going to reopen it? And by the way, okay, so we got this handy dandy graph, okay? The blue is partial opening. The yellow, light yellow is order expiring April 30th. And then orange, which is in clear contrast from light yellow, uh, is shut down or restricted. So, okay, so over two thirds shut down or restricted. That's just great. Well, is that why used car values are plummeting? Maybe. So can we get a rephase? Uh, rephase. Can we get a three-phase reopening plan? Yes, we can. CC si, si, puede. Um, <laughs> how do you make that connection? Car dealerships are reopening showrooms. All right, Texas is leading the pack. Somebody's got to, right? Because here's the argument. Wait, are the showrooms cleaner than the dealer trying to bring the car to the house? And then, you know, well, maybe, maybe, maybe when we're going to go show it to somebody else, we got to, you know, wipe down the car. I don't know, man. Maybe the showrooms are a better way to go. Maybe. I mean, you go into the grocery store. The UK coronavirus lockdown has made people more likely to buy a car. Really? 
Look at this. 56% of UK driver's license holders who don't currently own a vehicle were now considering purchasing one. Almost half of people less likely to use public transport. Ah, yeah, that's very interesting. So why are prices going down? Homemade car buying made easier with dealer home services on Auto Trader. Oh yeah, because nobody needs a car right now. Well, some people, they're, 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 the traffic is up, but the sales are down. So the supplies are, supply is up. Demand is down, right? Video walkarounds, by the way. Here's what you want to do. Let okay, even though nothing is selling, well, some things are selling. You want to be ready. How do you be ready for the home delivery dealer? It's going to go crazy here in about 60 days. You want to have the video walkarounds. Go ahead and already be doing that. If you work at a dealership, dealership, <laughs> uh, make sure that you are conversing with potential buyers using video and chat. Let them test drive at home and get ready ready for home delivery. Who's going to help you with that? Assertus. This is interesting. I saw this in a webinar, Digital Retailing Bottom-Up Approach. Vision, strategy. Now, by the way, this is what I found so interesting. The people, digital engagers. Nowhere does it say car salesmen. It says digital engagers. Interesting. Data, photo, video. This is a car dealership we're talking about. Yep. That is right. Exploring digital retailing. See, because your shopper, they're already doing all their research online. They don't need you for that. Not anymore. What they need you for is the e-credit. Contracting, e-contracting, e-credit. Uh, they don't really need you until delivery. And you better not try to bump it up a bit. Right? Better be, you gotta be right. Uh, in fact, here, if you're a carrier, to whom it may concern, if your driver has experienced any cold or flu-like symptoms in the last 14 days, cancel the load. Don't go in the building. Maintain six foot. Drivers are encouraged to wear disposable gloves and face masks. Touch points in the cab. All this stuff. Really? Do we get paid any extra? Are you going to send me any gloves? I don't know. But sign here. Uh, hey, now isn't the best time to get into the business, but it it may not be the worst since the economy will be opening soon. Who says that? Is the economy opening soon? I don't know, man. I read it on Facebook. It's got to be true. But what? I thought we were still in the first phase of it. Ah, never mind. We have never seen anything as bad as the crash you were about to see. Always run your own authority. It's cheap and control your own destiny. I wouldn't get back into trucking and hauling cars. You hear it all, man, right? Your head spins. Jay, you're making me crazy. Okay, which one of you did this? Mm, I'm thinking that was before loading. I don't know, man. That is not good. You know what? <clears throat> that <laughs> I think that's going to become the next Flip of the Week. Don't you love Flip of the Week? Hey, thanks, Ken. Appreciate it, buddy. You know, I mean, hey, I'll tell you what. For sticking around for 30 minutes in a car shipping business show, that's not bad. I'll take that. That's awesome. Regulations.gov. Are you staying up to date with your regulations.gov? Hours of service. You saw that in the news. That was on Facebook. Right? Uh, in fact, here we go. Enough doom and gloom. Let's do something fun. First semi-truck was invented 122 years ago to transport the earliest American cars. You don't say. Yeah, I just read this. Somebody said, did somebody, oh yeah. I remember who sent me this. Appreciate it. Uh, Winton, home state of Ohio, came up with a way of loading cars on a flat car. Look at this. Is this the first car hauler? I think it is. Only one car at a time took three people to load and unload. Yeah, because they had to lift it, right? Ain't no ramps. Oh, the good old days. <laughs> right? And, and check this out. Pretty soon, Winton would fall behind to individuals like George Cassens came along and made trailers with higher carrying capacities. Wow. That was a hundred years ago. Isn't that intense? Hey, man. That's right after the Spanish flu. Oh, great. Thanks, Jay. Thanks for reminding me. Sales impact varies by uh, DMA as evidenced by unique credit apps. How'd that get in there? Oh, Jonathan Smoke gave a great presentation. Do it. Go to Cox Auto Inc. Make a note. Go to Cox Auto Inc. Watch Jonathan Smoke talk about what's going on. Great stuff. Oh, hey. 
Assertus releases an electronic proof of delivery app for contactless delivery velocity driver. You don't say. Yes, I do. Uh, hey, random acts of kindness still count. Look at this. Somebody taped something in this guy's mirror. That was nice. You know what? Feels good, right? Cox Automotive leading indicators. That vehicle detail page views are up. 21 growth in visits. Oh, that's good. New vehicle form submissions. Credit apps down. Car service. That was an interesting thing. I know that you, if you talk to dealers and fix stops and whatnot, you know, service and repair, they expected a lot more service and repair calls than they've been getting. It's fairly interesting. Some things are not going as predicted. You don't say. Speaking of, Cottrell making face shields for healthcare workers. That's pretty cool. It's interesting news. Uh, auto brokers should be aware. Thank you for this email, PFA. PFA Transportation Insurance and Surety Services is looking out to make sure that you're okay. Auto brokers should be aware that Nigerian scammers are back at it. Boats delivered to the port and shipped to Nigeria. They're using stolen credit cards. I know this is this was shared by PFA. I don't think I don't know if it was written, but the point is, look out for this. Stolen credit cards, 4,900 boats being moved to Nigeria. Don't do it. Maybe. Okay, Loudon to Burlington, Kentucky. Oh, why did I share this? Okay, check this out. So, we're going to start to get into the meat of tonight. If you've hung on this far, or you're just joining us, either way, I really appreciate it. So, uh, this, the guy posts, he says, I'm an independent dispatcher. Broker called offering this load for one of my clients. I don't have anyone available yet. That's why I'm offering the load. Okay, that's what this is. This guy posted this. Tennessee to Kentucky... Now, this is a freight load for a flatbed or a step deck, but the rules still apply when it comes to broker versus dispatcher. So he's, a, he's an independent dispatcher. A broker called him, offering the load from one of his clients, and just seeing if he has anyone available. So he posts it. And this guy says, okay, but you're going to take a percentage of the load if, if, it, if it gets booked, right? And so after your cut, it'll be less than 640 and the guys then you say, well, that's a double brokered load. And the guys say, yes, but for dispatching services. And this other guy says, yeah, but you're acting like a broker. That's double brokering, buddy. Delete your comment immediately. And he, he's saying, but I'm an independent dispatcher. I'm not a broker. I'm offering my dispatch services here. I understand times are tough. Rates are low. If I could do something about that, I definitely would. Since I get my commission by representing the carrier, the better the rate, the better my commission. This guy says, yeah, but I don't see the difference between a broker and a dispatch service, especially with what you're doing. Okay, so what is the difference between a broker and a dispatcher, right? Here's another, here's a blog post. And I point this out. LogisticalForwardingSolutions.com They post this blog post. Logistical Forwarding Solutions. The dangers of trucking companies working with freight dispatchers. The truth about dispatching. Right? Ominous, right? The FMCSA has strict penalties for failure to comply for the main purpose of protecting the consignee, the shipper, and other parties involved with the valuable product being moved. Moving freight or taking possession of freight illegally could possibly cause their trucking authority to be revoked. They can also be held for liable for damages with the shipper's property under false pretense and liabilities if... if a claim ever arises. If there are damages or claims issued and the FMCSA learns that a fourth individual or freight dispatcher was involved, then other legal issues are sure to arise. The idea of working with an unqualified fourth person to whom dispatchers are considered to be is another reason that freight prices are higher and less profits for carers. Now, why did I throw that? I threw a smile in there, right? This is no laughing matter. But here's the problem. And this gets into all the legal definitions. Bonafide agent, arranging for transport, taking the money. These are all parts of the recipe of the definition. Again, which is no laughing matter, especially if a claim is filed. But is a broker a dispatcher? In that example that I just gave, was that dispatcher acting as a broker? I think so. Are all dispatchers acting like brokers? I don't think so. 
Is it a case-by-case -case basis? Maybe. James Lamb of the SBTC asked the Department of Justice to investigate if they violate antitrust and price-fixing laws to defeat competition and put owner-operators out of business. That was today. Now, I appreciate James Lamb coming on the show tonight because I really want to get down to the nitty-gritty of what is the law, what is legal, what is not. Because whether you agree with laws or not, you certainly need to know what they are. And ignorance of the law is never a good defense. Owner ops when dealing with brokers, you can't negotiate rates. You get a dispatcher that don't deal with brokers. They can negotiate rates because there is no middleman. I think that was posted by a dispatcher. And then the are those mouth those are mouths with dollar bills. Wow, that's cool. that's an intense message. Owner operators needed. I'm not a broker, so please keep your disrespectful comments to yourself. I'm an independent dispatcher that has direct contact with a shipper, carrying essentials, etc. Hmm. Okay. And then there's an SPTC article. I'm not going to go through this article, but the point is that there are groups that are checking to make sure if everybody's playing on the same level playing field in the eyes of the law. Man, this is the Car Shipping Business Channel. Are you excited about coming to the show tonight and seeing what's going to happen here on episode 135, Broker versus Dispatcher? You should be, because here's what's going to happen. Um, I think, let me make sure that James is standing by and ready to go. I think he is. Um, he should be. And let's see if I missed anything. Oh, wow, we got, what's the link to Truckify? Uh, you can go to truckify.com. Here, I'll just put it in here. Uh, let's see, let's get uh, Ty posted that, truckify.com. And um, wow, on both, on both pages truckify.com get that post there thank you ty and let's see and also oh man we missed a bunch of great well, there's a lot of good chat stuff here here right, let's check out the chat here real quick um let's do this before i bring james on let's see we got uh oh here we go oh michael colors here hey what's up michael shaggy's here what's up shaggy dude you're gonna love the interview i'm telling you if you're leaving if I think a couple of people just left. You're going to be so sorry. Oh, I feel so bad for you that you just left. Man, that's too bad. Um, oh, you were talking to Mike. Carlos, Ken, who what else we got? Truckify. Oh, Ants. Ants is here. Surge is here. Hey, what's up, Surge? Uh, what else? Okay. I don't think I missed too much. Ryan is here. Ryan's in Illinois. Not happy with Pritzker. Arr, I know, man. You got a whole nother month, dude. Dude, another month? Wow, right? And is that going to do it? What if it's two months? <laughs> oh, Ken didn't leave. Oh, I thought for sure Ken left. Guys, don't be saying those things about Ken. He's still here. Um. <laughs> okay, here's what we're going to do. All right, enough kidding around, Jay. I can't stand it any longer. I've got to find out what's going to happen. Here, I'll tell you what. Watch this. It's short. I'm going to bring in, uh, if, it, if it's not long enough, I'll run another ad. But um, check this out. Actually, um, James shared this with me. He wanted you to see it. And so just think broker versus dispatcher. It's about time they gave left and right Twix their own packs. Yeah, now we can finally have two of the side we prefer. I don't know what they were doing the same pack to begin with. They got about as much in common as you a mortician and me an undertaker. <laughs> <laughs> or you a janitor and me a custodian. <laughs> <laughs> or you a ghost and me a spirit. Okay, <laughs> 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 she's dying. So, all right, so what is the difference between... What were the things there? We did the... Uh, I know there was the ghost and the spirit because I... It, Oh, and then the janitor and the custodian. All right, so what's the difference between a broker and a dispatcher? Now, James, um, he shared that with me, and I, I do think it's pretty... Actually, oh, really? You want to see it again? All right, here we go. It's about time they gave left and right Twix their own packs. Yeah, now we can finally have two of the side we prefer. I don't know what they were doing the same pack to begin with. They got about as much in common as you a mortician and me an undertaker. <laughs> <laughs> or you a janitor and me a custodian. <laughs> <laughs> or you a ghost and me a spirit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> hey, I just showed the video, James. Thank you for joining us. Can you see me and hear me okay? All right, I can see you. I can hear you. Let's do this. Let's put. I'm going to put a couple things on screen. So there we go. We got the lower thirds of our names. And James, you are James Lamb of SBTC, and you are here to educate us about broker versus dispatcher. Am I right? And you know, I I, I really do. I want to say this again: is that um, I know I you know I add colorful commentary, and I will continue to do that. But ultimately. I appreciate you joining us tonight. You spend a lot of time on this issue, and you, your information and knowledge will be helpful no matter how you view it, meaning people out there, right? People listening. There's going to be people that are dispatchers. They are brokers. They are carriers. They are dealers. Some aren't sure that they know the difference. Some are positive that they know the difference. But either way, your information and knowledge will be helpful. I'm positive of that. Okay, okay. Awesome. So, um, please do. I know I, I, I semi-introduced you. Please fully introduce yourself to the audience and let people know what you do. Oh, oh, no. oh, hold on. That was me. My bad. Please start again, James. I had an audio technical difficulty. Please start again. Okay, so uh, take two. Uh, James Lamb, Executive Director uh, from the Small Business and Transportation Coalition. And um, basically, we operate through the domains of smalltransportation.org. We're also truckers.com um, out there, and uh, both going basically to the same website. And we're here to promote and protect the interests of the little guys in the, in the transportation industry. So whether you are a trucker, you're a you know, company driver, uh, owner operator, leased on with your own authority, small carrier, small broker, even small shipper. The, the idea is that we're here to provide a, a trade group place for folks to, to come when they're, you know, uh, in the in the industry and they're the little guys. And basically, you know, we're here to promote and protect their interests. So whether that means we have to in, you know, go out and sue uh, certain parties in terms of litigation or whether it's lobbying efforts, you know, FMCSA, USDOT, uh, Congress, whatever, you know, whatever the government uh, interface is, we're, we're out there to basically, you know, protect the little guys. And, that, and that's what we do. And, and that's the thing is when you point that out, I mean, that's really helpful because ultimately it, when, when the little guy gets messed up on a transaction, it can be devastating to their business, right? Yeah. And so right. it's, it's, very, it's a very good thing um to help protect small businesses and so essentially that's that's probably at the core of the mission of what you do right yes. and you yes. work in all trucking transportation freight right you don't specialize in car hauling but no but no. it applies to car hauling right sure Same i mean that's that's property car. so yeah okay absolutely. and so and now and can't okay now they okay they can hear you okay good just want to make sure so, all right, so where do we, how do we start in this discussion? I mean, we first got connected on LinkedIn, right? I think I saw yeah. something you posted because right. you regularly talk about, do you, do you focus more on the fact that dispatchers are illegally brokering? Or, I mean, where, how do we start with this issue and do, how far back does this go? Oh, my gosh. Well, it, it goes back basically to... You know, when the regulatory scheme was per, first put into place in the 1930s, I mean, 